All right, we'll be looking at a Platinum Victor game. Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Coach Approach. It's your coach, Blake at the Black Baker, and we're going to be looking at a Victor Mini gameplay here. Um, I told, I'm, I told, lol. I chose this video, or this vibe, because I feel like having 11 kills and having the game be 32 minutes is a little bit too uh, much, or too far to be having that. I mean, you had a lot of kill participation too. So it goes to show we could have closed out and we didn't, especially if we managed to have like that. Maybe our team was doing well too. So there's, there's I want to kind of go over this and just see where are the holes and why have we not, why weren't we able, weren't, why weren't we able to close out the game? <laughs> Holy moly, can I speak? All right here. So we're playing against Oriana, pretty much an easy champ here to kind of deal with. Doesn't really do much early. When you're dealing with champs that have an AOE ability, we wanna make sure that we are standing to the side. I remember I told you that before um, during a lesson. Yep, just like that. That way if she chooses to hit you, she doesn't push the wave and if she chooses to push the wave, well, you just kind of get off scot free. You really want to try to control being in positions like this. And you might be thinking, well, I'm winning everything like that, but if she can manage to keep hitting you back, once you get to, to higher elo, you will deal with that. She's gonna just keep hitting you back because you're hitting her. And the thing is when you go onto her and she's forced to get hit, the best thing to do is hit you too. So essentially what's gonna happen is th this is gonna be totally off because you know you have resistances and stuff. But let's say her auto, and she has her passive, the more she hits you, the more damage she does. But anyway, let's say her auto is 42 damage. Like I said, just bear with me, 42 damage. The ability that you're gonna be using is, we'll just say it's your Q. So we got 60 and then we'll say we got 55. So we got over hundred damage, right? And if she's hitting you with 40, 42 damage, Every time you hit her with a, your your damage, you're still taking hits. Like I said, all of that is varies. This is just an example. Which means, if she can rinse and repeat this thing, especially because she's running Corruptings, no? Yeah, and she has Biscuits. You only have Health Potion and you have Biscuits, right? So she can potentially just out-sustain you. Also, adding Burn damage. So her damage is going to be a little bit higher. You rinse and repeat this tactic, eventually you're going to be down to HP. So like right there. And like as I said, this is why it's important to stay above 75% HP. Because all she needs to do to make sure you die is to get you low. That's it. She doesn't have to commit to the kill or anything. Because then her jungler can easily just come up and do the rest of the work for you. Or for her. So you got to be really, really careful when you're going for these ins and outs. That exactly. That when you do it, you're not going to be retaliated on. Because if you are, you're going to end up in that position as we just said. Uh, where you just kind of take a blow for blow. And that ain't, that's not a healthy position to be in. Because she, she should be doing the same thing. Standing to the side so that you have to pick and choose. Do I hit the wave or do I hit her? If you hit her and then she re retaliates by hitting you in the wave because you're always in the wave, she wins. Because she'll then push you up and you're missing CS. And you're going to have to waste more mana clearing this out. So by the time you push back again, you won't be able to poke her as much. Like She's going to be just denying you pretty much counterplaying what you're doing. Okay, you're chilling out now. You're letting the wave push back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, got a little free hit in. It's pretty telegraphed too. Look at how you're moving. You can tell when you're going going for a trade. I'll tell you. You're looking for one right now, right? Okay, nope, you're not. You're not. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Looking at it. If I just watch you. I'm gonna go in for one. Like I said, it's pretty obvious. Um, but gank's coming in, so that's good. Can't believe she fell for that. That's, that's a netters. All right, let's go back. Same thing. I'm gonna see if you're, if you're pretty telegraphed because we, we don't want to be too telegraphed. We want to make it look like, oh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. All right, so we'll watch when she gets back. Okay. Holy fuck. You walked in for it. I'm gonna look for another blow right after this. Okay. You go back in again and then about, there it is. Right, and sometimes it's a little different where it's, up really far or it's like this you want to get to a point where they don't know when exactly you're going to do something and obviously not every player is going to pay attention to that but a player like me i will i will definitely pay attention to how you're playing within that first five minutes it's like okay i see i see kind of how i have to deal with you that's the time how the players play they size you up first and then they play accordingly they don't play to the champion nobody cares about the champion because 
if this was a challenger player, it's not going to play that champion the exact same as a uh, as a gold player would. You know what I mean? So be really, really careful about being predictable. Be unpredictable when you're looking for trades. So um, mix it up when you're going for trades. That way they won't be able to tell what you're doing or what you're going to do. That's the easy way for you to get set up for um, for ganks too. By just kind of being predictable. Okay. So far so good though. CSY, 33 to 20, cool. Okay, don't like this ward. If you're gonna ward here, Ward there because you're looking for the, if, if somebody's in the bush, don't ward there for vision. No jungler is going to do this, especially in higher elo. This is just one of the common spots. Junglers get a lot more creative. And so what you want to do, if you're going to put a ward, put the ward here and put it like towards the edge. That way you can see the whole entire length. This will do the same exact thing that does, even though it's a little bit farther. Because what happens if you use this, they just do this. And then they come get you. Just like that. So this is a no-no ward. That's a terrible X. This is a no-no ward unless you're just checking in to see if someone's in the bush at that particular moment. If not, put the ward here, put the ward here, put the ward back here. Um, but yeah, try not to put it there. Okay. Cool. Just like that, right? If the jungler was to come out because she knows that you're going to be that aggressive, you would have gotten killed. Really, really predictable. The thing is, because you're not getting punished for how you're playing, you don't know you're not really, you don't know you're playing it poorly, so to speak. You're just kind of getting away with it. The jungler is not coming and it's a Graves, which is interesting. Um, she's not retaliating back like she should be, auto per auto, blow for blow. She doesn't really know what she's doing. And so you're just getting away with being hyper aggressive. But that's gonna kick you in the ass later when players pay attention to how you're playing and then take advantage of your, your, your hyper aggressiveness. You see it a lot when it's like dealing with Irelia players, but generally play the exact same, like all of them, hyper aggressive. But there's a big difference between a really good one and just a poor one. A really good one will be aggressive at certain times. A really poor one will be aggressive all the time. And those are the ones that are always in. So because you're not getting punished for it, because you're a ranged champion and you have your little shield, you know, and stuff like that, you don't really, you, you don't really care. Look at look at the position here, right? You are doing good standing next to your juggler, though. This, I like this. You're standing on the side of your juggler. I like that. Very, very good. Okay, Gary shows up. Free kill. And clap. Alright. That juggler is fucking capping the shit out of you. That guy is like on your ass. He must be your duo. If not, that guy's a real one. If that guy's like some random and he knows how to play. Oh, that's what's up. But the, as much as you're committing to him, I'm going to assume that that guy's a duo. Because uh, I'm committing a lot for a random player. I could be wrong though. Okay. Okay, I like it. Good rotation. One thing you want to do, just as a side note, when you're going to rotate, pay attention to if they're moving. And so what you could do, do you have a ward on you? You don't have a ward on you. But what you could do is you could put a ward wherever the cross section it might be. So let's say we're going to try to go towards bot this way. I'm going to put a ward here. Even if we go this way, I'll put a ward here. Um, you have a pink right now. It doesn't really matter. As I said, I didn't expect you to do it right now. I'm just saying when you do roam, it's just a little, little tip here. Put wards behind you. That way you can see if they're coming. And that way you can react based off what you see rather than trying to react on the spot where they are. Okay. Now you're committing a lot to that Pantheon. He, ha he has to be your duo. If he's not your duo, then damn, I don't know nothing about League of Legends. It just seems like... It just seems like you guys commit a lot to each other. Nothing's wrong with it, I'm just saying. Like, having a jungler that commits to you is really fucking nice. If it's a random. Good rotation. 
So it's kind of like that. You see how she just kind of randomly appeared out of nowhere? Cause let's say let's say we're not paying attention to this and we're just kind of focused on this. And then I was like, where, where are you? This is why you put wards around, that way you can tell and you can react accordingly. Luckily though, your team was fighting them, so it wasn't that bad. But even here, you still had to react to kind of what was going on. You didn't know the exact location where they were. And that's why warding, when you, when you go do a rotation like that, helps you a lot. Even if it's a pink, right? You could say, well, if I put down a pink, it's wasting 75 gold. Well, a kill is worth 300, right? And if you can put 75 down to prevent you giving 300, I think I think it's definitely worth. You get it refunded. It refunds itself pretty much. That's just a overstay. I'm not gonna say much about that. Okay, rotating again. I don't really think you have to rotate this much. This is a little overkill. And the only reason I say that is because you're not really needed for anything. It's just you're there. You can be getting your farm. You can be getting your uh, tower down. Or you could be defending that. Uh, there's just other stuff you could be doing. That's all. <laughs> Alright, so. Do not look to over roam. Really think if your team can handle it without you. Just kind of like how you went top and you looked for Yorick and whatnot. That guy was going to be gone by the time you got there anyway, but you left lane for it. So, definitely do your best to not roam so much when you don't have to. That really comes down to analyzing. I know you just try to be there for your team, but at, at the same time, like I said, if you're just always going to get there late or you just aren't needed, and you lose out on CS, you lose out on the potential to grab your mid tower, which is the most important tower. Uh, it just kind of sucks. So, a really early Baron for us to not end early. What happened? This is fine. Okay, recall. What are you? What are you over staying for? You have a lot of gold, no? Yeah, thirteen hundred. Okay, so I don't agree with that play that you did there, but I agree with you overstaying because we just got stuff and you don't want to waste the, the countdown timers, okay? So big, big difference there. I do not agree with the initial play, but because there's not enough up to basically stop what you're about to do, it's perfectly fine for you to overstay here because you want to take advantage of the numbers being down, okay? So we get that. Back, you're ready to go to Dragon. Perfectly fine. I like it. All right, need to back and go ahead and deal with that. That you are. You're crazy, man. You're a crazy, man. So let's go back real quick. So why do I say let's go back and deal with that Yorick? So we're doing our thing. We see Yorick. We get this kill here. Cool. She's fucking out the game. He shouldn't be here. This guy's inting. Lulu's inting. If there's no minion wave here, there's no minion wave here, like to get to the tower. And Oriana just goes around and Graves doesn't do that and Lulu does that. And we just sit there and defend. Do you think that you four can take the tower with those three defending it? You might be thinking, well, yeah, maybe it's still you could just dive them. You are right. You can dive them. But you got to realize the plays that you're making, they can't be coin flip plays. Look, look how much damage that dude just did to you. If you happen to dive those three players while off wherever you're getting ready to go, it could go south. You might kill them all, but someone else is going to die for it. And Pantheon's not even there. So if you guys would have did this and they would have just rotated and Pantheon did whatever the hell Pantheon's doing... You guys wouldn't even got this tower. It'd have been a 3v3. You guys don't really have much siege potential. So 
So instead of doing that, taking those coin flip plays, we could go back, deal with him, push up, get this tower for free because it's already almost down. Then they could probably look for another fight, which can lead into another tower. We need to start playing around minion waves. There's no reason to go for plays and go for kills. This is why I was wondering, like, why do we have so many kills and assists, but nothing really got done early? It's because we're just kind of fighting to fight because we're ahead. We're just killing everybody. And you just kill them and 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 kill them. And that doesn't really do anything. That's how you throw games. There's no reason to just keep, keep, keep killing people over and over, especially if your team's not even late game. So what we want to do is whenever we are looking to fight, have it be for an objective. Um, you know, of course, Dragon Bear and Red Buff, Blue Buff, whatever. And then, of course, next thing is learn to play around the waves. If the wave isn't close to tower and we take a fight, we will not be able to do anything with it. And I'm pretty sure that's happened. And I'm pretty sure that's a frequent thing when you play where you do have fights, especially because you're able to get ahead as you are. And then it gets to a point where it's, okay, we took a fight. What do we do next? Oh shit, nothing's up. Okay, I guess we'll all recall, all right? So you have to learn to manage these waves a little bit better so that the play that you're gonna make is going to be around that. So let's go back. Let's just ask yourself, well, how do we how do we do that then? How do we play around the waves? Well, look where you are. What are you getting ready to happen? Dragon, okay. So what we can do is we can go down bot and clear that wave real quick. And instead of doing that, because they don't need you, you're perfectly fine to clear the next wave. And then you rotate, we take the fight, the minions are here, we grab this tower, we grab that tower because graves die, right? So that would have been two towers for free. Especially if Pantheon, if we would have pinged them to come. It would have been two towers for just to play because we set up the wave instead. You were not needed to get that dragon. So if you wanted to take the play on bot, that's why it's important. All right, so we're pushing up. Cool, cool, getting that CS. Cool. And how do you know which wave to push? Whatever side you're gonna play on, make sure that you got the waves pushed. So if you're playing top, you wanna push top and mid. If you're playing bot, you wanna push bot and mid. Just like that, you see that? And this was a this was an accident. This was an accidental wave push. Let's say if your team sucks, they don't know how to wave push properly, which means this is why you have to be on it, so that we can set stuff up like this. We can get towers for free, just like this. Way smoother, way smoother of a of a tower than the other the other play that we did in bot. Look, two towers for free for nothing, nothing but having a wave, nothing. That's why it's important. That's why this game lasted so long. Just a lot of random occurrences with really no forethought. Not just from you, but from your team as well. All right, because if you just decide to be there for your team, but your team is really isn't really doing anything, you just taking a lot of fights with your team. Okay, I like it, I like it. So you're really good at like shoving the waves to go, well, I mean, that really wasn't a shoved wave, but you're really good at taking the wave before a dragon and baron, just transition that to taking the wave, not just the midway, but the, the top and bottom when you're looking to play to that side for the next couple of minutes. All right, it looks like the game's just pretty much over here. So yeah, boom, boom. So if we prepped our waves a little bit more, um, we definitely would have been able to close this game out a little bit better. So our homework here is definitely going to be number four, actually number one, um, and then number four. Why did I start two? Okay, I was like, what the fuck? Not number one, I'm sorry, two. Okay, we need to make sure that we're not looking to overroam. Don't wanna waste time. If we can get more CS and we can take tower, we do that. And then of course, number four, we gotta learn to play around the waves. Objectives too, but like I said, you're a little bit better at that than you are playing around the waves to make sure that the plays that you go for lead to things without having to think, oh, what do we get next after the fight? Okay, so I hope this helped you. Got any questions? Just let me know. Uh, hit me with a message. Thank you for participating in the free bot review. Maybe I'll be able to see you next week. Um, same time, same place. So, if you guys would like free bot reviews, of course, it's every Saturday. I open up this little channel that says free bot review. You post up op.gg there, and bing, bang, boom, free bot review for you. I can't get to everybody, so make sure you do it. First come, first serve. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope this helped.